Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie from deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com and I am here with my second YouTube video for the Creative Arts Collaboration hashtag event, hashtag Love Spring Art. If you look up in the top corner, there will be an I card and it will pop open here in just a second. And it will have the playlist for all of the YouTube creators that are doing the hashtag Love Spring Art event. So today we're going to do this lovely little bouquet of poppies, kind of California poppy style, sort of. They're made up out of my imagination. The leaves don't necessarily go with the way the plant is actually supposed to grow. The seed heads might not be exactly the same. It's okay. It's out of my imagination and I had fun doing it. So stick around and I'll show you how to draw it, how to ink it, and how to color it. First I'm going to get my uh, poppy just drawn in. Just get some poppies drawn in and I'm making an anchor petal first. I like to put that first petal in to anchor it, then get my get two my other two petals in that sort of wrap around and form that cup of the of the flower. Throw in some stamens. And then I want to make sure that I get a couple petals that sort of hang out off the edge. They're, they're wrapped around the outside and they sort of just unfurled, just uncurled from the, from the flower. I'm not going to do too much detail here because most of that's going to go in with the uh, pen work. I'm going to stay zoomed in here, but I am going to take my stems down a little bit longer. My second flower is going to come over this way. Just bring my stem up to that point. So the second flower, the petal is, the my anchor petal is right here. And this petal is actually a tipped out petal to begin with. The second petal is going to come down like this. The third petal is going to come around like that fourth petal is sort of hanging out over here and then the fifth petal is just tucked in like that. And again, I'm not putting a ton of detail in yet. Most of the detail will come from either the pen and ink part of it or the uh, watercolor. The watercolors that I'm going to use are Prismacolor watercolor pencils and uh, Albrecht Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. So they are, they're nice, they're nice watercolor pencils. You can do this with anything. Um, when you're just doodling, it doesn't have to be the, you know, most fabulous artist grade, whatever. This is just doodling. It is just fun and simple, easy going, no stress, no worry. Let's just get some flowers. Let's just make ourselves a little, a little bouquet of flowers. I'm going to tuck a couple little seed heads in here too. Oops, that line went a little wild. That's okay. Erasers were made for that. And these little poppies have sort of this little disc at the back of the seed heads and that little disc kind of thing at the front of the seed heads. Now these seed heads are actually from a different kind of poppy but I like the shape of them so I'm making this a, a hybrid. These are hybrids and it's because I'm making those seed heads so big just because just because. And there's has that little wavy edge there. 
and if you see the top a little bit there's kind of a crisscross now I'm not looking at poppies right here <laughs> I am making this up and that's why the flowers are different than the seed heads it's just the way it is I'm going to throw a couple little branches of leaves lightweight leaves nothing big I'm going to go ahead and zoom out for you now this is kind of dark in here right now and it's not um, you can't really see it very well but at least you can see it some I actually that first picture that I showed you was from the first time I tried to do this video and I realized at that point where you saw it that I forgot to hit record. You know, I'd been sitting here and chatting along and being all chatty and, you know, just enjoying your company and then realized, oh rats, <laughs> it wasn't recording. So all of my chatter that I had had, none of it got recorded. And that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And I'm going to throw one more branch of leaves that just sort of goes over the top. These leaves are not representative of this particular plant. I am putting them in because I like them. And it is easy. And we should be able to make our bouquets of flowers with whatever flowers make us happy. You can make your flowers any color that you want. You don't have to stick with what's what's found in nature. Neat thing about flowers. When you put them in a bouquet, all is fair. All is fair. I really don't need to be doing all of that so much, but I did anyway. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get this all inked in. When I'm inking, I am not worried about making a hard, solid line. I am going to be making lines that sort of dance around a little bit. They, they are solid, they break up, they're solid again, they break up. As I get down towards this bottom, I may make them a little more solid or not. And I'm going to come down and I might make a little bit more solid line on one side, but then it might break again. These poppies have little hairs. And instead of putting the hairs in with paint, or colored pencil. I'm going to put the hairs in with this Micron pen. It's a water, uh, waterproof pen, so I can draw with it first and then do the watercolor right over the top of it, and it won't bleed. It won't run all over the place. All right, so I actually sort overshot and went down into my stem a little bit that's not a big deal I'm not terribly worried about it all I had to do was throw a couple more shadow lines there and there we are so what I've done here is put in my my uh, anchoring petal and now I'm going to throw a few stamens in the middle I'm going to go ahead and put in my sort of a shadow highlight line. The, the side where the stamens are is going to be darker than above the stamens. And now I'll go ahead and draw in those, those petals. The pencil lines that I put on are suggestions. They are not something that I am uh, a slave to. If I decide that I want my petal to come around a little bit more. It can come around a little bit more. It doesn't have to be the way you penciled it in. 
If you have a better idea when the pen is going on, go with the better idea. Don't get so hung up on if it's going to be right or if it's going to follow exactly what you already did. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. I like serendipity. I like the surprises that can happen when we're drawing. Those little things are the things that can make you so happy when you're all finished. You don't have to, to stress. Just throw some pen lines down. And don't be saying, oh, right, yeah, she can do that, but I'll never be able to. That's a bunch of hooey, let me tell you. Drawing is a set of skills. The more you draw, the more you develop those set of skills. I was watching a show earlier today, this day that I'm recording this, and there was a panel discussion and one of the things that somebody said i'm not sure which one said it i think it was lindsay the frugal crafter said it drawing is a set of skills it's just like learning to drive you had to learn to drive to learn that set of skills and then you had to practice You have to practice if you want to get better at anything. This drawing is super simple. Very few lines actually to make the flower. And here I'll show you again. This one I'm going to make this sort of, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's sort of a trapezoid. It's, narrow here, wider here, and then diagonal lines to connect it. And they're wobbly. And wobbly lines make the flower seem more real. If you made hard lines that were just traced as a, you know, like perfect, perfect half circles or perfect ellipses, I don't know anybody that can actually draw perfect ellipses without a tool. There probably are some, I just don't know them. And they probably wouldn't want to know me in the way I draw because I am wobbly lines and loving just the, the freedom. See, I got this extra line in here. Whoop, whoop, no big deal. No big deal. And if I hadn't even drawn your attention to it, you would not have realized that that was a, a wonky line that ended up someplace that it didn't even belong. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm now going to, I'm drawing down and I actually skipped a spot so that I could have a leaf coming across. I'll go ahead and put that line in and get a little double line. And from there, I'm going to take a leaf across. There, leaf went across the stem. The stem is not running through the leaf. The leaf is in front of the stem. Leave gaps in your lines. It lets the leaves look more natural. It gives them a place to be. And I am just making up these leaves. Like I said, they don't exist in nature. These leaves are just, now this leaf is gonna go behind the stem. And to go behind the stem, you want the stem to be a solid line already. And I'm gonna put a little shadow on that stem where the petal would be shadowing it and I'm going to get some little hairs on here. Little hairs, just little hairs. Quick, 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 quick little hairs. Quick, quick, quick. Mm. 
this branch of leaves is actually coming up around behind that flower. So I just jump over the flower and come back in to the branch of leaves behind the flower. I just leave a gap. The flower is the gap. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying this. I'm also hoping that I can get this done in less than about 25 minutes so that you're not sitting here forever because I don't know if you all want to watch me draw for half an hour. You might. If you want to listen to me talk for half an hour, well, you might. I don't know. But I'm having fun. And I'm enjoying this. And I can get lost doing little details. So I have to tell myself, all right, move on. Get this, get it drawn in so I can start getting it colored. And look at that. I made this sort of hook shape and to make it look like it's more real. Go up and give it a line on the other side. It doesn't have to match exactly. It can be bent over. It can wrap around behind this, behind its little stem. Look at that. This one's wrapping around. It just wrapped around. No big deal. I'm going to go ahead and shadow that where it's going behind. And I'm going to put some little shadow lines on these leaves real quick. I'm not going to do a whole lot because they're going to get painted. But I'm doing a pen and ink. And I don't have to stick with just the watercolor for my shadows. But I'm going to stop messing around with that for a minute. Get this seed head on here. has a little disc that sort of goes around the stem here. And then this little bulb. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be quite as big as I made it earlier. And that little flat area there. And now I'm going to go ahead and get another little seed head on here. I'm leaving a gap in this stem for my little branch of leaves to go across. Now there's the disc at the base. And here's the little disc at the top. Because it sort of grows in that space between. All right, so now we're going to draw this, this leaf stem, this little branch of leaves, and it just goes right across in front of that other one. This leaf is behind the stem. This leaf is coming off the side. And this leaf has a little branch to it. And then these are just really fast. And I'm not speed doing that. This is just my natural speed drawing. My natural speed of drawing. I want to put another leaf there. And I'm going to put some little hairs on the seed head. Give it some little lines. you think about it, the little lines are just giving you an indication of the shape, that it's three-dimensional. Nothing big. You don't have to put them on. You could have smooth stems. You don't have to have stems that are all wonky crazy. And I think I am actually, let's see here, I'm going to put a little ladybug somewhere. Where's the ladybug? Ah, the ladybug is going to be on this stem right here. So I'm just going to put a little ladybug 
just a little ladybug. Give her little antennas. Give her a little back there. She's got little legs sticking out. And a couple dots. And her head's black. And you cannot quite see that. There she is. See? There's the little ladybug. No big deal. Real easy going. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and get this painted in. I'm going to go ahead and get my little ladybug painted really quick. Just because she's a fast and easy little ladybug. Show you that it doesn't have to be hard. It does not have to be hard. There she is. Alright. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw just a little bit of red down inside. Very lightly coloring. I don't want to color really hard, but I do want to, I, I want the color to show up, but I don't want to be coloring too hard down in there. I want to get the color so that it will spread. And if you don't put enough color on, you'll end up with just a line. You want it to be able to float the pigment up off the paper when you put use your water brush. So I'm going to be using the Pentel water brush here. And it's a real wet brush. But I'm not going to do that until after I've got some other colors on here. So let's get this get this color on here. This paper is not real watercolor paper. This paper is office style uh, cardstock. So it is just cheap cardstock because this is just a doodle. It's nothing precious. I am not um, I'm not worried about making a masterpiece here. I am just having some fun just getting to relax and yeah I'm, I'm making a video but this is part of my fun time I enjoy getting to do this so getting to color getting to draw giving yourself permission to play we all need that. We all need that. We need to we need to remember that just because we've gotten older doesn't mean we're not allowed to play anymore. I'm going to go ahead and get the color in on these other these other uh, flowers here really fast. Just really fast. I am leaving places where there's white. And I'm going to hope to uh, maintain some of those whites for highlights. We'll see. I am much more comfortable with uh, pen and ink and just regular color pencils than I am with doing the uh, watercolor. And that's why watercolor pencils are like so cool to me because I can actually lay the color in very much like I would do with a regular color pencil. Although I am coloring way lighter and I'm not doing much layering of colors because I'm going to be getting it wet. And if you put too much pigment, you end up getting um, a soup of color. And that soup of color can they can just really overpower each other. Not too happy about doing that. So I don't want to overpower my colors. But I do want to get some of this little bit deeper orangey yellow in here. This is the uh, sunburst yellow. So I just want to sort of smudge that in there. Okay around the outside edge get a little bit more of that bright yellow because what I ended up doing was 
I thought I had this yellow in my hand when I was coloring, and I didn't. I had the Spanish orange, which is another very pretty color. I'm just going to take this sort of greenish, yellowish greenish color and color those stamens. And if it turns a little brown in there because of the, on this one, because of the red, no big deal. It's just coloring. It's not a masterpiece. It's not something, I mean, it's probably going to go in a portfolio. It's not going to end up getting put in a frame and hanging on my wall. Um, you know, it's just coloring. It's just for fun. It's just because I want to see if I could. And I wanted to do, you know, a quick video to share with you. Because it's fun to share videos with, with people. It's so neat making friends out here with people that I've never met before in real life. Or not very many. I mean, some people that have signed up become subscribers on my site. They are on my page. They're, you know, they're people that I know. You know. But very few are actually people that I've met in face-to-face -face conversation. And isn't that an amazing thing? That we live in a world now where we can do that. All right. Get these. I want to put a little yellow highlight, yellow orange highlight onto these little seed heads. And just get some color thrown on. Get some color thrown on. This is my lighter color, and then I've got a dark color of green also that I will go back in and get some, some highlights or excuse me, shadows put in. And I may throw a little bit of yellow on some of these also. In those, in the highlight spaces. But remember, this is just a quick picture. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying this. I hope you are too. Hope you're having fun seeing what I'm doing here. You know, I'd love to see if you decide to draw some flowers. I'd love to see. I do have a Facebook page for Deliberately Creative. It is a closed group, but all you have to do is search for Deliberately Creative and ask to join. We're pretty fast, you know, within a couple hours, um, usually, we have approved. Um, we'll give you, you know, we'll, we'll approve you, and then you're, you're free to post pictures, uh, ask questions. It actually makes me really happy to see people coming in and, and interacting with each other and making new friends, creative friends. Making creative friends is a lot of fun. Sometimes we have people in our lives that are not as supportive of our creativity. I'm real lucky. I've got a husband who, he is an artist also. So he understands when sometimes I need to just go and create for a little while. He understands that. But it's taken him a little while to come to that realization. He hasn't always been an artist. He's actually only in the last seven, six or seven years has he found that he has an artist's eye. It's always been there, but he's just been developing it 
as the years have been going by here. He took up photography and got very good with it. And now he's ta where he's taken up uh, acrylic and watercolor. And he has just started his own YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. Very cool. His YouTube channel is MWB Arts. If you want to take a look at that. And he does a lot of pen and ink and watercolor and um, things like that also. Uh, we have different styles. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to actually see the different styles that, that people have. Now let's see if I can do this without taking away all of my highlights. I'm going to lose some. I know I'm going to lose some, but that's okay. Get in here and get this all dampened down. This is, remember, this isn't watercolor paper, so I have to be kind of quick. The, the, the paper sort of grabs the color pretty fast. It sort of soaks in. So I have to work quick. If there's areas that I'm trying to blend, I have to move that move that color quickly. I can't um, can't sit around, can't wait on it. You gotta move that color while the paper is wet, because once it's soaked into the paper, it pretty much is grabbed on. <laughs> And these are not ink tense pencils. These are just regular old Prismas, Prismacolors and uh, the Albrecht Durer uh, Faber Castell watercolors. So if these were, were um, the ink tents, I would have known for certain that that's the way this paper would have reacted with the ink tense pens. Ink tents, you get it wet, and if you don't get it moved while it's wet, it's done. It's done. It says I'm stuck. I'm not moving. This paint it, or these these watercolor pencils are moving a little bit, which is nice. It's moving around a little bit. All right. So now I'm going to get this one that has that little bit of red in there. It's going to be pretty. And I'm going to sort of work around those uh, green stamens for a second. And I'm working this red up and out into the yellow really fast. Really fast. I'm going to try and leave some of those highlights, but I'm trying to work that, that color too. And I want to work that color. Get that in there. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if anybody even wants to watch my video, you know? We'll see how so something that you could do for me, if you are interested, after you, if you have, if you like the video and if you click on like, it will actually open up some, uh, it'll open up a link. It'll open up areas that you can share. So you could actually share directly to, um, social media from, from the, uh, page. So if you wanted to share to your um, social media, please go ahead and share. I, I would appreciate it. I know that um, there are people who would be interested in seeing this artwork, um, learning how to do it. I know I'm, I'm not really teach, teaching but doing it slow and, and just, you know, in a, uh, in an easy, easy going way here, you can see what I'm doing and you can mimic, you could go, oh, I understand. So she went and put the dark green after she did the bright green. I'm not worried if I go outside of the lines when I'm doing my color here. 
this is this is watercolor I'm not doing a technical um, botanical drawing this is just watercolor and color pencils and pen and ink anyway so you you can see you know where I put the dark green down into the deeper areas or the underside of leaves or someplace where I think a shadow would be be hanging out and you don't have to be a slave to it you can just put it where you think it looks good you know leave some lights leave some put some darks play with it that's how you learn how this goes together you play see how I had left that and I had put yellow up on the middle of that seed pod so first I'm getting the I went in and I got that green aha I forgot to put some green on this other seed pod and I think I'm going to use my darker green see you see things you take them you take care of them I now I got that green up here wet and I'm letting it dry for a minute while I get this other green wet and did you notice I did my lightest colors first with the water brush then I moved over to my darker colors then I went to my greens I've left that little yellow spot unwet it's not wetted wet down yet because I will wipe my brush off a little bit before I go in and do that the greens I'm not so worried about here if I'm going from light to dark or dark to light, it's no big deal. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm recovering from a cold, so my voice is a little bit froggy, and I'm sorry about that. But I'm pretty mellow here, and hopefully that's showing through also. All right, just finishing up some of my greens here. I'm going to go back. I've just wiped off my brush. I'm just going to make that yellow get nice and wet and move that yellow around. Come over here, wet this yellow down. Boy, that makes it get brighter. And there we are. All right. So there's the painting. I will zoom out here a little bit for you so you can see the whole thing. So here we are, there's the whole picture, and I'll go ahead and put my initials on here. And a lovely little bouquet of flowers for my hashtag event. But here you are, a lovely bouquet of flowers. If you liked this video, please click like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber so that you'll find out when I do future videos. If you um, want to, please leave me a comment. Let me know what I did well. Let me know what you think I should work on. I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me and I would love it if you would share this video with other people. It helps me out. The more often it's shared, the higher up in the search ratings I'll come when people are looking for watercolor and pen and ink. So thank you so much and go out and do something creative.